St. Patrick's Day is this week, so it's time for a classic Irish whiskey. This week I'm looking at Redbreast 12 year old. Welcome back to the channel, I'm Matt, I'm the Whiskey Nerd, and like I said, this week I'm looking at Redbreast 12 year old Irish whiskey. So let me get it into the glass and I'll tell you a little bit more about it. Now, if you have been around on this channel before, you'll know I have actually reviewed Redbreast 12 before. In fact, it was the first whiskey review I ever made on the channel. So I decided that I looked back and I said, look, I didn't really know what I was doing back then. I kind of just started. I had a very bad pandemic era haircut going on and I figured now it's St. Patrick's Day, I time I look back at some good Irish whiskies and some really good classic Irish whiskies and give them a proper review. So I decided to start off where I started with Redbreast 12 because this is the whiskey that kind of got me into making this whole channel because I had a few friends, they were beer drinkers, they still are beer drinkers, but they kind of said to me, what's a good Irish whiskey? I said, well, obviously Redbreast, Green Spot, things like that, but they said, if I'm gonna pay 50, 60 euro on a whiskey, I wanna make sure it's a good one, where if I get a beer, you know, I can get a beer, it's a couple of euro, it's not a great beer, doesn't matter, you can get rid of it, you can stop drinking it. Whereas whiskey, it's, you know, it's an expensive purchase, it's a big barrier to entry. So I have a giant whiskey collection, I said, you know what, I'm gonna start reviewing some of my good Irish whiskies and let people know what they taste like so they can kind of get a sense of the whiskey before they buy it. And I've been at this for a while now so I think it's time maybe I go back and look at some of those other classic whiskies because I did start off with Redbreast, with Green Spot, with things like that and I think it's time maybe I, I go back and I say okay I'm a better kind of presenter now and I think I'm a better reviewer now let's go back and give those other classic great Irish whiskies another shot and give them maybe a better review than I did when I was just getting started. I might, over the course of the next few months, go back and look at some of those other classic whiskies. If there's one you want to see, let me know down in the comments below because I do kind of like refining my process. Going back and kind of building up that flavor library of different whiskies lets you then experience the same whiskey you've had before in a different way and maybe pick up some different kind of flavor notes. So if there's something you want to see me review, let me know down below. But we're here today to focus on Redbreast, which is undeniably one of the pillars of Irish whiskey. It is one of the kind of top outstanding Irish whiskies on the market, despite it being the kind of entry level for the Redbreast brand. So Redbreast have a few different whiskies. They've got the Cask Strength 12 year old, the Lustau, the 15 year old, the 27 year old. They've got some kind of special limited editions, but this is their kind of entry level whiskey. It's a 12 year old Irish single pot still whiskey. If you're not familiar with pot still whiskey, it is the style of whiskey that's unique to Ireland. It has to be made in Ireland and the mash bill rules give distilleries a bit of room to play around and kind of experiment with different flavor combinations. So the rules are, it has to be at least 30% malted barley, at least 30% unmalted barley, and at most 5% other grains. So some distilleries will just go 50-50 right down the middle, others will go 70-30 or 30-70. Some distilleries will use that 5% of other grains that they would use to kind of experiment and give different flavors to the whiskey, but what Middleton did here for Redbreast is they went right down the middle, 50% malted barley, 50% unmalted barley. The malted barley is going to give you those classic kind of malty notes. You're going to get the sweetness, you're going to get some caramel, some biscuity notes, but the unmalted barley gives you this kind of spiciness. It gives you this kind of creaminess, this kind of oily, rich mouth feel to the whiskey and that helps pasta whiskey deliver a huge amount of flavor. This only comes in at 40% ABV, but because of that really rich texture, it does deliver a huge amount of flavor. And it's one of the reasons most people, if you ask them, what's a good Irish whiskey, they'll say Redbreast or it'll be right at the top of their list. It was aged in bourbon casks and finished in Oloroso sherry casks. So we should have plenty of kind of nice sweetness and some nice fruitiness, but let's go in for the nose on the Redbreast 12. Cheers. Okay, immediately coming out of the glass, it's kind of fresh and floral, quite light. But then right behind that, you get that caramel, you get that vanilla, you get that really kind of deep, deeper flavors. And then there's a layer of spiciness behind, like there's a good layer, it's like right up, it's kind of floral and light. Then you get the caramel, then you get the spiciness coming in behind it. In terms of 
the kind of spice. I'd say it's kind of um, a mix between cloves and black pepper. Like there's definitely a bit of like heat in there, but also a bit of earthiness coming through. There's almost some like um, stewed figs or dates or those kind of really sweet fruits that have, you know, but they're, they're quite sugary, they're quite sweet, but they may be like um, soaked into honey. So they've got this really nice richness to them that kind of accentuates that sweet fruitiness. And then at the end, as you sit with it, I'm getting a little bit of the kind of toasted oak coming through because there's a little bit of oak spice as well, hiding underneath all the rest of those flavors. Like I said, it is kind of like a, a lighter whiskey, so I'm not really getting a huge amount of ABV presence on the nose. Like that alcohol is well incorporated. It's kind of muted down behind all those other flavors. So it's definitely one of those whiskeys that has a lot to offer, but it's still quite beginner friendly. So I'm going to go in for the palate on the Redbreast 12. Cheers. It's rich, it's oily, it's spicy. Like there's a huge amount of spice that does come as soon as you taste this whiskey on the palate. Like there's cinnamon, there's clove, there's black pepper. And it's quite nice, quite rich, quite kind of tingly, but it's still quite fruity. Like that sherry influence is still there. It's still there in abundance. You get plenty of like those stewed fruits I was getting earlier. Plenty of that kind of rich kind of mouth coating, kind of honeyed texture almost. And it's still quite sweet. You got that caramel, got that butterscotch. You get all those kind of nice notes rounding out all that spiciness and that fruitiness. So I'm gonna go in again and kind of see what else I can find on the second sip round. Cheers. Yeah, it's fruity on the palate. Like there's plenty of those kind of stewed dates, figs, raisins, all of that kind of honeyed kind of texture where you get the sherry kind of mouth coating. It really is a nice strong sherry influence on the whiskey where you get that really nice richness there. But there's also, at the tail end of the palate, there's also a little bit of kind of nuttiness that comes through, almost like um, like toasted almonds, like marzipan, that kind of, you know, where you get the sweetness of the almonds, but you also get that little bit of toasted nuttiness that just comes through. And that is often the case with Oloroso Sherry, when you add a whiskey to it, you do get that little bit of nuttiness that comes through, as well as all the fruitiness. So I think I'm gonna go in again, but see what we can find in the finish. Cheers. Yeah, it's spicy, it's fruity, it's sweet up front. And then as those flavors start to fade, like the um, the spiciness does fade a bit and then it kind of lingers on a bit. That nuttiness, that sherry influence does become a bit more apparent, a bit more obvious into the kind of the finish of the whiskey. And then you get this nice bit of oak spice as well becoming more apparent as the vanilla, the butterscotch, as those other flavors do fade away and gives you a nice long finish like it does come in at 40 percent abv but it does have a nice rich long finish that's not kind of overpowering so you can enjoy it but at the same time it's not going to be like demanding or not be overpowering and ultimately that's the reason i always have a bottle of red breast on my shelf and if someone is asking what's a good whiskey to have i always say well you got to start with red breast because it is kind of one of the examples of what irish whiskey is all about because it's nice, it's easy to enjoy, has loads of flavors. It's definitely up market, but it's not so up market or so kind of high proof that everyone can't enjoy it. I mean, let's face it, there are some bad Irish whiskies on the market and especially around St. Patrick's Day, you will probably see some very bad Irish whiskies on the market. So if you're in the mood for something a bit better, but still kind of within reach, a bit more flavor, but still not kind of so out of touch, you won't be able to enjoy it. Redbreast is definitely one to pick up and enjoy this St. Patrick's Day. I put out whiskey reviews on Wednesdays. I put out cocktail recipes on Fridays. And if you want to see more like this, make sure you scroll down, hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button, and maybe let me know what you want to see me review next. Until then, I'm going to keep on enjoying this, and I'll see you next time. Sláinte.